everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4, the new world of Last Days of Europe, with me, Alpha Pile Mega, and the Bar of Japan. So I hope you enjoyed the report on the state of co prosperity sphere. We finally get some good news, at least as far as Japan is concerned. And today we're gonna continue with the fight in New Granada and Cameroon. With the fall of Free France, I dare to believe that we might have won it for the Cameroonian African state because the Americans are gone and now it's just gonna be us against the Guinean coalition I guess um, and in New Granada we're also doing kind of good we've eliminated two divisions already we're gonna eliminate another one hopefully soon or so I hope and we're gonna continue on trying to focus on dealing maximum damage everywhere we can now our air force is already you know continuously bombing the ever-loving hell out of these uh, guys but we truly need to because somehow I don't know how it's possible. I don't know if they're getting help from someone, uh, but Colombia itself, or the Republic of Colombia, grew their forces quite dramatically during uh, this conflict. So, or maybe it's just my perception and I am just pulling it out of my behind because uh, once the uh, Red Menace was taken care of, they started focusing on us purely. I don't know, it could be either or. Uh, foreign policy, nothing we can do here really, but we've managed to completely destroy the American garrison, so that line of thinking is done. As far as our government stability goes, we are doing great. Did we already get the, no, four days before the new hand is dealt in the parliament, so we'll see. Okay, our units are moving. We'll have the same plan of elimination in the fight over here. We need to weaken the enemy forces before we do anything else. Okay, this fight is going fairly well, I guess. Hmm. You guys are retreating. You really need to start... You will rest. Uh, I think we might even send you somewhere to the port uh, to rest because we need you over here then. I'm thinking whether or not to move them. Okay. Well, we won't then. I thought that we might have time to rest, but we won't. Okay, so how's it going over here? You guys are going. You guys are going. I don't think we're missing any equipment really. Yeah, we're not, it's just the general state of the units is... I mean, they're fighting in areas where there is almost no supply at all. Okay, we'll just cut through here northwards and use it as a means of Operations. Still 27%. Yeah, but these guys are just wrecked. Okay, you guys retreat over here. Yeah, we're really not doing all that good here. Unfortunately. So look at how these guys are not Well I mean they're almost destroyed completely so this is really just talking about the inevitable. Oh come on though. You can do this, so can you. Okay, so what's happening in Cameroon? Okay, our units are in position. Okay, go. It's going to be relatively easy. 
Yeah, the enemy units uh, in Cameroon are really not as strong as they are in Colombia. Okay, so we have been joined by... Oh, this is unbelievable. This is the Otore... Otore... Senchishi, and who is sending this unit in there? Guangdong, okay. So that's why this unit is so strong. Okay, we're having another of our allies helping. Okay, we got a couple of production units here. So you know what, actually, I'm going to put them on military. The reason is I want to start producing trains. We haven't really been doing that at all. And I feel like it might be a good idea to do so. Uh, even if, I mean, we are doing good when it comes to logistics fulfillment, but I feel like, you know, it cannot hurt to have this done. Okay, so push them out. And now you'll be able to get in here. Well, actually, we don't even need that. We have to just get you in here and then in here. It's gonna work fine. So, how's it going here? So you're still fighting. Yeah, well that's what I was afraid about, but okay, never mind. We'll just push them somewhere. So what kind of doctrine is that? Ah, it's a motor doc okay, last doctrine. Concurrent frontal assaults. An enemy on the back foot, no matter how strong, can neither defend itself nor fight back. Our strategies shall hence make use of multiple units fighting concurrently to keep the enemy as often in the back foot as possible. So we lose 20% organization of us when moving, we get 25% extra planning speed and 20% extra planning. And get a breakthrough tactic. Amazing. This is looking really good. Okay, so now I just need to repel this attack. Actually, I wish I could... Yeah, because we're gonna encircle these guys here, these three divisions that are working on that. Well, our units are desperately trying to defend Medellin. So when will you arrive? One day and 19 hours. You will arrive when? In five hours. So can we attack here? We can! And we can delay you! Which means when we take this area, these guys will be destroyed. That is absolutely amazing. Do it. Get in here and encircle them. Okay, Medellin will be defended, which is great. Okay, over here, our units. Okay, you get the Korhogo. Yeah, attack over here. And we need to move. Mala is an enemy. So we need to close it somewhere like here. And then focus on destroying these units. It's gonna be a slower approach, but one that 
will actually yield us results very soon. Okay, I'm going to get in that 20 hours, 19 hours. So, what does the 228 MPs? Yeah, we wasted a little bit here. We need to improve relations with independence desperately. Why did our government stability and support in the House of Peers drop to 31%? What the hell happened? Didn't we have like 91 and... Huh. What the hell is going on? Okay, we need to start focusing on that immediately. I don't want the government to fall here. So you will be eliminated. You will be eliminated in just a couple of hours in 12. We're here, we're advancing, taking Korahogo. So this one is neutral, right? Yeah. So I could eliminate one of these divisions immediately by taking this area and just moving south. Um, let's not do let's just oh so oh you can still do it okay that doesn't bother us much okay so these guys are now getting slaughtered Taken this area, we're gonna take this area, and there's only a bunch of units in here which we can get rid of. There is an offensive going on here. And these guys are gonna die. The West Russian Revolution in front unifies West Russia. Oh, okay. Around the world, individuals and governments alike find themselves in shock, as for the first time since the West Russian War of the 1950s, concrete information has trickled out from the husk of the Soviet Union. The West Russian Revolutionary Front, long fought crushed under the German boot, has spread and tightened its grip over West Russia and annihilated the many Batman warlords under the brutal gaze of Grand Marshal Mikhail Tukhachevsky. And famously called the Red Napoleon, Grand Marshal Tukhachevsky's use of deep battle tactics will prove invaluable as the Red Army storms east to the Urals, practicing an even more militaristic form of Soviet communism. It is clear that the Red Napoleon plans to destroy his enemies and unite Russia under the red flag once more. Um, okay then. It is worth looking into, but not worth losing our sleep over. Okay, so this is going well. I really feel like we might want to pull our units out of here for at least a bit so they can rest, because this division in Medellin is just constantly under attack from all sides struggling but they're doing God's work it's insane An exile division and if resolve really uh, okay there's two of them attacking you But you still should be able to repel them with this kind of defense. 
Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Give you five hours. Get there in one day. So, yeah, we might want to eliminate them. Just, you know. Oh, God. There's more of them. So moving in here now makes way more sense. Okay, I wanted to see how those fights go. Come on, destroy the last division. Only one. Okay, so we've taken this area. Now, this is just a couple of units, but I. I feel like it still might be worth eliminating them so that we can move northwards. It's gonna make the war longer, but honestly, yeah, we just have to. So you destroy them here, then eight. Seven, seven, six. Come on. Two. And one more. Okay. <laughs> That's fun. It's always fun. See that. Okay, Medellin is under more pressure, so is Tunia. But as we keep destroying these guys... Yeah, look at that. Their strength has lowered by almost 30,000 men. Okay, get in here. We'll just eliminate these and then we'll be free to do what we want in the north. So you guys are actually holding over here. I don't think this is worth it. Stop the attack. Go here. Because we will need you over here so that we can encircle these divisions, but we need to protect our back so that when I did this you know we can safely eliminate that area and not be stabbed in the back oh you are still holding Madeline alone against everyone that city is most likely in complete ruin Uh, okay, but that means you guys can go over here, and you guys can go over here, encircling these two divisions and destroying them. Can you believe it or not? Uh, we need to be tactical. Juha Renieme re-elected as Finnish president. When the Karelian War began, many observers thought that it would lead to disaster and electoral defeat for the cock. However, they have been proven wrong, as the victory against Russia has only strengthened Ritniemi's position and secured his support from both the people of the Electoral College, enabling his re-election. With victory securing Finland's immediate position in the world, Ritniemi will work to try and strengthen his country's sovereignty against the Russian menace, despite the wounds it has already inflicted upon it. Furthermore, he will also work towards developing Finland to be a valuable partner to all of Europe. Meaning Germany. Okay, so we will get there. Three days and 14 hours. Three days 
And nine hours. Okay, that's actually perfect. That is actually perfect, and we can concentrate our forces there together. Jesus Christ, you guys need a medal for the great work you're doing there. Okay, so we can speed up a little bit, I think, because we are in safe position everywhere. Actually, stop here. You guys need to attack over here together. Destroy them, and then one of you will move northwards, eliminating these divisions, and the other one is gonna finish in the ones in the south. Okay, once you guys move to new positions, we are going to immediately launch an attack over here. Making sure that we get them encircled. Because destroying the enemy here is a bit more important. Okay, let me now see what's going on here. So, informist conservatives, 52%. Yeah, but really. So, you will improve relations with reformists, increase the faction power of conservatives. That means we can focus on independence, which immediately put us to 243, and with that, we'll be able to hold the majority again. Okay, so I'm going there, that's great. We're almost done here. Okay. So moving there and you're supporting that. Attempts at reform of national mobilization law. Ikeda sat in a boardroom surrounded by his cabinet, and with their desperate attention, he declared his intentions to reform the national mobilization law. Yoshio, struck by the move, made his confusion clear and expressed his doubts over how the government could move such a monumental and concrete law passed by the Kono era. A similar doubt proliferated between his men, much to Ikeda's frustration, and they all grew concerned looks on their faces. That's a really interesting expression, groove look on their face. Calming down the cabinet, Ikeda confessed to his men that with the newfound impetus of the reformist faction of the Taisei Yokosankai, he may find enough support in the Diet to amend the restrictive conditions Japan lives under imposed by the wartime measures. Ikeda, um, Ikeda I guess, looked down at his notes, continuing to read the conditions of his pro positions, but as he looked up, at, looked up, he noticed the lack of confidence shared between his cabinet. Scoffing, oh my god, scoffing at their skepticism, he asked them to look beyond the semantics of the initiative and get to work with the task at hand. So that took away 75 political power. Uh, okay. Well, we need to finish this one then, and then end the wartime rationing. But yeah, we now have great majority in the parliament again. But why is the House of Peers supporting us so little? That's weird. Why? And we're barely getting any political power now. So, okay, let's loosen the Zaibatsu nationalization. Or loosen the Confuse. Now, we need to go this way to get political power and start improving the situation. So, loosen Zaibatsu nationalization. The Second Sino Japanese War took a toll on the landscape of Japanese economics. Japan triumphed 
in the end, but it paid millions in the end, manpower and industrial assets to achieve such a victory. One example of a price the war had extracted was the nationalization of the Zaibatsu assets under the now repealed National Mobilization Law. Though the law is no longer in force, the ordinance and restrictions that bind the production of materials still exist. Dismantling the force of this nationalization would be the first step towards freeing Japan from its shackles of its past. Although the assets would remain in government hands until further notice, the cabinet shall order a unilateral halt to production. The ministers responsible shall redirect these assets for use under the advice of the Zaibatsu, formal redistribution pending the government's discretion. Such a time would arrive that the Japanese economy is free. It must wait. Okay. So let's get this one. So we're gonna continue with this attack and elimination. Okay, we arrived over here. And you guys can actually move over here. And you will go over there. Okay, we got more. Production units. Economy is doing well. GDP is dropping, but I have a feeling we're getting a little bit back in the issues with the stability. We really need to increase the House of Peace support. Which requires a propaganda campaign. Okay, and you are now eliminated. Which is amazing. And we're gonna get in here. And we'll attack. Good. So there's a couple more divisions here which we will destroy. And we are done. So, okay, with you over here. We can now... Launch an attack and eliminate these guys forever. Especially this one is a valuable kill. The other two, well, those are you know pretty much already dead. But okay, though in turn we are losing a lot of territory in the north. They are launching an assault on us. But the destruction of these units will free up valuable resources. Okay, last division, the strongest one will drop now. And we can start causing another pocket over here, for example. Him and break them down. So what's happening over here? Okay, I guess we can help with both of these fights. So that's four divisions. And there's actually a victory point here that I completely missed. You're still holding Medellin. I can't believe that. So you guys finished this. So we'll just push in here and move north. Good, good, good. Decisions available. Yeah, we can't really do anything with this amount of political power. Did we actually achieve a victory? Channel crisis. Indonesian war. The West African crisis is still ongoing and Colombian civil war is still ongoing. So those are going to be very valuable. 
No, the early Colombian War is now over. Yep. So you'll take it and you can now move in Medellin. Okay, so moving here. Actually, no. Move to the port here. You need to rest. Because we need... And then we're gonna relieve you guys. Because that is really brutal. But I have a feeling that the Colombian Civil War is now... Yeah, it's way more even. Look at that. We destroyed about half of their army. So the march north is now gonna be much easier. This one, however, is still... Still looking a little bit iffy, but we've already struck pretty deeply on them. So Cameron has a stronger army now. Just need to continue with that to make sure that oh, we hit them where it hurts. And that way the main army can advance. Because if they have no troops, you know, there's, there's no way they can resist us. Okay, you're still holding Medellin. Which is just crazy to me. Okay, you're taking this area, right? And we'll then push straight for Barranquilla and take it which will mean that we have won the war here. I'll be honest, I didn't really believe that it would be both victories for us. But turns out it is. Come on, get in there. Okay, and now get to the port. We really need to reinforce and resupply it. And the port is where our supplies are coming in. Okay, so what's the best way to push? I guess here, here, and then here. That will close it off. And should be sufficient. Go, 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 go. Seven more hours. And we was... No, we didn't. Okay. Go, go. And 1.9. Yeah, the inflation is just jumping up like crazy. But debt to GDP continues to decrease, which is great. How's the poverty rate dropping? Administrative efficiency is increasing further. Functional administration is great, but the streamlined bureaucracy is going to be even better once we get it. Well, it's going to be a couple of years. Okay, attack and push them out. So how are you guys doing? Okay, so we're already there. That should really help you significantly. I mean, that's the only port province that we have anyway. And you guys also need to be relieved. Go, go, go. We're moving for a fight. Damn. And we need to leave those units there for a bit so that they can rest. Okay, anyway, with that said, I think the episode is done. It is amazing. New Granada is almost done. Uh, in Cameroon, we're pushing. You can see that the enemy is being pushed back pretty much everywhere. Just by the map, you can see that um, it is looking pretty good. 
The biggest issue that we're facing right now is on the domestic front. Uh, the stability of the government is really weak. We have enough support in the parliament to do anything we want. So if we get more political power, we're going to burn it here for the propaganda campaigns. Because those are where it is for us. And how's the military doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. So anyway, thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you in the next episode.